All right. Well, welcome to the Insect Hunter live personal interview with the one viewer out there. Awesome. Anyways, so this video I'm just making to kind of do as a test just to see um, how it how it works. Uh, also, just to maybe have a question and answer at the end. So uh, one person out there, whoever you are, uh, let me know in the comments who's out there. <laughs> oh, it looks like they left. So it's just me here in this room by myself talking to myself. Oh, and we got two people. So we just doubled our audience. Awesome. So anyways, the reason I'm making this video is I have not yet gotten access to the equipment that I need uh, and the programs I need to be able to produce the full videos that I'm doing. Uh, now that I'm working with the University of Idaho, so I'm working on that process, but I decided I would go ahead and I would do a stream. Wow, four people. We just quadrupled our numbers. This is awesome. Um, so um, that's the reason I'm doing this video. If you guys have a question, make sure and write question at the first of your comment and then uh, let me know in the comments and I'll check those comments at one point um, to see what's going on. Looks like I'm showing live comments, so nobody's really commented yet. There's probably a little bit of a delay, but I've at least got this uh, showing there. So anyways, um, I'm going to jump into this episode. Uh, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to show you guys uh, five of my favorite insect specimens that I have here in my collection. And so um, we'll start with uh, this one, I think, here. So let's see here. So this one here is a click beetle that I got... Um, I got this thing about four or five years ago. Um, what happened is my dad and my future father-in-law and I were up hiking in an area and uh, we, uh, I was just digging around in rotting logs. Everybody else was just looking around enjoying the scenery. But I was digging around in a rotting log here in Idaho and I found this insect, which I thought was totally awesome. I had no clue um, what it was. Oh, it looks super huge. I mean, it's like the size of my head. Um, welcome, Mr. Koi King. Awesome. I'm glad to have you here. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it's it's pretty big though. I mean, comparatively speaking. But yeah, this is, a, I think it's a, uh, I can't remember what the name is, but something uh, eyed click beetle. I was going to say two eyed click beetle, but I guess it is. It's the two eyed click beetle. Um, I think it's like a black owl click beetle or something like that. And as you guys will realize, I don't know everything. Hey, it's, we got hipster on here. This was your idea to uh, to have this uh, video, my top five specimens. So really to me, the insects are not just about what the insect looks like or what they are, but it's about um, it's about the fun adventure of collecting them. And so this is one of those insects when I ripped into that rotting log, I saw it and I stopped and I was like, oh, what, is the, what in the heck is that thing? So uh, I've never found one of these before in Idaho, but I, this was the one I found. So um I'm sure if you did an internet search, you could figure out the actual name of the click beetle very quickly. So uh, that's cool. And click beetles are really cool because they will actually like click in your hand. And it's, all, it's really weird because, uh, let me show you one more time here. Whoop, I'm gonna drop my specimens and destroy them. Um, yeah, the tropical click beetles are really cool. Um, the ones that have glowing eyes, those are awesome. But anyway, so you see it's got kind of, a, there's like a break between its thorax and its abdomen. Sorry if the focus isn't perfect here, but probably better just holding it back here but you can see it's got this kind of break between its thorax um, and its abdomen and right in there it can kind of uh, take that spine and it can click it and then it can bounce um, so it's pretty cool I like click beetles a lot so that is uh, the click beetle uh, my second specimen here is this and this is a burying beetle and I think this is a Nicrophorus marginatus maybe I don't know um, but I love burying beetles. What they do, they're so cool. Um, these ones I was raising in the lab. Look at the underside of them too. It's like gold. It's awesome. I love it. I love how they have kind of that gold color underneath on the inside. This iPad camera is probably not the best for showing off these insects, but hopefully as I move forward, I can maybe get some better equipment and stuff. But this is just kind of a test to see what it's like. But um, these burying beetles, what they do is they'll go find a carcass and then they'll go uh, dig a hole and they'll bury that beetle, or sorry, they'll bury the, whatever the carcass is, it's usually like a mouse or a bird or something like that. They go and they bury it. And then they'll go in there and they'll chew it up and then they lay their eggs on it and then the larvae will feed on that um, big mass of meat. 
Um, so they're pretty cool, but I got to raise these in the lab and we would do different tests with them, do different breeding tests and things like that. Um, but they're just really cool. I would handle them with my hands. I'd usually wear gloves because they can bite, but I really like the orange and black colors. So I'm a big fan of Halloween. And also just that gold on the underside is just, it's just cool. And it's just kind of a hairy gold under there. Some hairs and stuff too. Oh, we're losing viewers. I don't know what's going on. I guess they, they're bored of that one. So I got to put something cooler on there. Um, the third specimen I wanted to show here real quick. This is, a, this is a type of boring beetle. And to me, it's not all that boring. But it's like a borer. Um, you can see here. I love this one because it has just such beautiful colors on it. So this one I collected. I was out at a camp once. Um, and I just saw it randomly. I think it was just on the floor. I was just walking around inside of, I was at, I worked at a camp where we would do like youth camps and stuff, teach the youth um, religious stuff and how to um, be leaders and stuff like that. And I was just walking around and I saw this on the floor and I was like, what the heck is that? That actually looks really pretty. And it, you know, the camera here in the low quality that I'm getting on this stream because um, I don't have that good of a, uh, streaming right now at the place I'm at, but it's a really pretty um, color. So maybe I'll do this one again so you can actually see the insects, but um, I thought it'd be fun to show you that. Like I just got a text. Let me make sure there's not some issues with the audio or something like that. Um, uh, nope. I I think some people are having struggles finding it. My wife was going to try and find it so she could watch too, but she's struggling to find it. But she's probably logged in on my account, so she can't see the streaming because I am streaming. How's it going, Charles? I've got Hipster here and a few other folks. It's exciting to have you guys here. Um, but yeah, this is some sort of boring beetle. Um, but if you look on the bottom, it's a super metallic um, color. The lighting here is not all that awesome, but... And you'll see this specimen is probably one of my worst pin specimens. Look at that poor pinning. But this was, I got this before I even started my collection. This was like one of my first ones I ever pinned. So you can see how poorly that was pinned. Pinning is not my favorite part. I will teach people how to do it and I will do it if I have to. But I'd much rather be out collecting and having fun, you know, looking for insects because that's what's exciting to me. So there's my perfectly pinned specimen. Um, next, I'm going to talk about um, this one here. Those of you that have watched my aquatic collecting video know that toe biters are a lot of fun, um, for sure. So here is a huge giant water bug. Look at that guy. Just look at his face. Like, does that not just creep you out? Look at that. You can even see his beak there if you look really carefully. Sorry, the quality is not all that awesome. Yeah, this... Uh, Congrats, Zoedo. I'm glad you're uh, doing your first preparation <laughs> of a specimen. Awesome. Um, anyways, so if you look here, um, you can see kind of that beak there. And this guy, um, I actually didn't collect it myself. At A lot of these insects have to do with my in-laws for some reason. But um, at my uh, in-laws at their house, on their doorstep, they found this thing. So imagine this guy coming and knocking on your door. I like to call him the Grim Reaper because he's got those those pinchers that he can grab you with, those front claws there, and then he's got that beak to just really lay down the um, lay down the pain, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you'll you'll get to know me a little better with these live streams and uh, some of my spontaneous nature with these things. But yeah, that's. Uh, that one I really like to show people. I just like to show them that because of how painful it is. Everybody, when they look at my collection, they're always like, oh, what's the most poisonous thing you have or the deadliest? And I'm like, uh, I don't really have anything that's that poisonous, but I like to share that one because it's one of those things that just causes a lot of pain. So um, the last one I want to show you is this moth here. I can't remember the exact name. I think it's a Saturnid moth or a Luna moth, I believe. And this guy, I was just walking around in the woods looking for insects. I was mostly going into rotting logs. And as I was just walking around, I uh, saw a whole bunch of dead leaves on the ground. And this guy was just on the ground. He was still alive. He was just sitting there. So I picked it up, picked him up, and I handled him alive. He was 
totally alive and fine and I just put them in a jar because I was like wow this is a very pretty specimen so I don't know if it just barely came out of its pupil case or what had happened with it but I thought you know that's kind of interesting it's a very pretty and uh, decently sized um, moth there so I thought that was cool um, yeah, so I'm just chilling here at my new office. Those of you that are just joining us, I was just showing off some of those, some of the favorite specimens in my collection. And, uh, yeah, I'm doing the stream because I, I didn't have all the, uh, all the programs I needed to get a movie done this week, but I thought, hey, I, I need to do something. So, uh, I wanted to see what you guys think. So, if you guys have questions, if you want to ask those, I'm going to pull up the comments here. I think I've got them shown there. I'll give you guys a second to maybe see if you can think of some questions. While you're thinking of questions, um, I'm going to step away and uh, bring one of my friends to show you guys from my office. All right, I'm back here. Let me see if I can look at the comments. Um, dragonfly nymphs I'm not 100% sure on that one I would say probably with dragonfly nymphs I would think they could uh, fight each other it probably just depends on the species uh, most insects it seems like that are predaceous will become cannibalistic if they don't have a lot of food or if they're in a very tight space. If you had a really large aquarium, um, then I would think it would be fine to kind of um, leave them in there together. But um, I'm not sure. I'd have to look up on the exact species itself. I've never actually looked that up. Any other questions you guys have got? I know I didn't get a lot of people watching it this time, but maybe next time that I do it, I'll have more people watch and then I'll get a schedule up like a week before so that folks know that I'm going to be doing it. So since I'm not seeing any questions, I'm going to just show you guys my new, uh, my new pet here. But I think that's cool that you're raising dragonflies. I think that would be a lot of fun to do. And I think you guys will realize, too, that a lot of stuff I don't know. I'm just learning stuff with you guys, and so I love to learn with you guys. So uh, one of the first things I did when I, uh, when I got my office here is I decided to get some cockroaches. So this is a Madagascar hissing cockroach <laughs> and they like to escape for some reason right now. I don't, I think uh, this one's a female and she's a little bit shy right now. She's saying, Hey, what's going on? There's five people out there watching me right now. Um, I don't know that I have a tarantula hawk in my collection. Let me see. I think I do have a pump pillage. Let me double check here. I actually don't think I do have a tarantula hawk in my uh, collection. I was trying to look over there. I, I thought I had one, but I might have just given it away to somebody. Um, finding insects in logs. Hmm. So the biggest uh, biggest thing with logs, I would look for wet logs. Um, insects like to be in like uh, moist places. So if you can find a log that's wet, I would go with that. If it's so you don't want it to be fresh wood either it needs to have been there for at least a year or two like fresh wood you're not going to find anything in it um, so really you just want to find things that are hollow when you hit it like hit it with a hammer and stuff and if it feels hard then there's probably nothing in it um, I usually turn the logs over and look on the underside because that's a more moist part so look actually uh, um, look under there uh, let's see here Cana day or dynast today? Um, I'm not 100% sure about that. I'm assuming that has something to do with maybe some uh, groups of scarab beetles or something. I'm not sure um, about those families. I learned all of the families for college. I crammed. I seriously studied the families. Probably put in like 30 hours of memorization of all the families. And then um, after I took the test, I tried to make space for other things in my brain. So those of you that are watching my channel and that are subscribers know that I'm not just like your normal scientist type entomologist. 
So I like to look at myself as a person with one foot in the world of science, which is very complicated and very, um, very precise and a lot of expertise. And then I like to see myself as having one foot in the, in the real world where people don't use all those super complicated names. I have people that will not say common names of insects, which I somewhat disagree with. I mean, it's more specific, the scientific name, but whether people are going to understand it or not is kind of an issue. So anyway, yeah, these are my uh, cockroaches here. Nobody seemed to comment on them, but that's okay. I'll probably make a video showing how I'm kind of rearing them. I'm trying to get them to start breeding, and uh, hopefully that will work so I can have a whole colony of them. So I can probably put a video up of that. <laughs> You're dreaming? Yep, I'm use I like to use common names. I'm sorry. I, I see it as, you know... And I've said this before on the channel, like anybody, there's tons of scientists that study insects and a lot of them could come on here and talk to you forever, but you know, they're going to talk to you about the wing venation of the Surfidae fly and all of the V2 vein and how the crossing of those veins means that the two species are differentiated by this many clades. So I don't want to use complicated terms. I think insects are fun. I think they're exciting. I think it's uh, something everyone can enjoy. So I'd rather, you know, let people enjoy it and make everything uh, interesting. Yeah, uh, you use uh, Madagascar hissing cockroaches for tarantulas. Um, yeah, they definitely could be, but I like to just use them as pets. I take them around to the schools and everybody at the schools think these are the coolest thing on earth. You know, to me, I want to get some cooler pets. I've got some mealworms I'm raising and I'm trying to use those to teach people that they can feed them to chickens and use them for other things. Um, but yeah, these roaches, I'm hoping they're going to start breeding here soon. They're pretty calm. My son actually absolutely loves them. Every day when he wakes up, he says boat, which means bug for him. So he's always wanting to come in here and see the roaches. Eventually one day when I have my own house, I'll be able to um, do something else. So I don't really have much else that I want to just sit here and talk about and blabber. So unless if somebody uh, has some more questions or something like that, then I'm going to end this stream. And um, please uh, let me know what you thought about this stream, if the quality was good. Those of you that are watching it, um, when it ends, leave a comment on what the quality was like um, while I was streaming. And those of you that are watching it after the fact, let me know what you thought, if you think this is something you want me to do again, or what times you like, so I can maybe do a question and answer period again. Just wanted to see what you guys think there. So thanks for watching. This episode was sponsored by the University of Idaho Extension. And uh, hopefully uh, for the next one, we're going to get to do some other things. Let's see here. Oh, we've got a couple other questions. Uh, Toe biters, any tips on finding them? And then what's my most hated insect? Toe biters, let's see. Um, I would just try to go to uh, aquatic situations, try and find ponds, lakes, places like that. You might have to ask for permission depending on where you go. Um, it seems like there's got to be some vegetation in the water from what I've seen. But really in a lot of ponds, um, if you're in the southern part of the United States, that's going to be your best bet, I feel like in the southern where it's warmer. Out here in Idaho, where I'm up in the northwest, I have not seen them quite as commonly. Um, but I would just go do a lot of aquatic collecting, get an aquatic net, and then pull a bunch of algae out and see if you can find some. And if they're there in that water after, you know, three or four, um, pulling three or four nets out of the water, you should be able to start seeing them. So um, that, those that's my advice on finding toe biters. Um, most hated insect. I don't think I hate any insects. Um, let me think about that one for just a second here. I think if, if I'm talking about pinning and uh, how much I hate pinning insects, I would have to say crane flies. So let me show you one. Uh, this is not the best specimen to show you, but I'll show you anyways. Oh, so this is not... Uh, Okay, so I don't even have actually have a crane fly because uh, all of them have broken, but they break, their legs break so easily. This is a Batacidae, which is a type of scorpion fly, and they are very similar, but you can see they've got these very, um, like the, 
like the scorpion, uh, sorry, like the crane flies, they have very thin legs and they branch out really far. So they're almost impossible to pin without breaking multiple legs as you do it. So I really hate those for pinning purposes. I hate crane flies, I guess I would say. Um, I don't know that I hate any insect. The one thing I do hate that I'll say, hipster, is chiggers. So I've gotten into chiggers. If you watch that aquatic episode, you see that I get in, I've, uh, I'm much more particular about chiggers now than I used to be because I've gotten chigger bites before to a type of arachnid and those, uh, those bites um, that were that I had lasted for the itching, at least the symptoms lasted for four or five months um, at times. So I really hate chiggers. I don't mess around with chiggers um, in my life. So I'd say those are one of the more hated things. Um, but as for insects, I can't really think right now of things that I hate. Um, I, I love, I mean, there's love-hate relationships. You might hate an insect when it gets into your house. Like, I love ants, but, you know, if ants are in my house getting into my food and stuff like that, then ants can be really annoying. <laughs> this guy tried to escape on me. But anyways, I think that's going to wrap it up for this time. Maybe next time uh, you can have some more questions ready. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts on what you felt about it. And uh, we'll see you next time with the Insect Hunter, where big adventures start small. If I can figure out how to end it. <laughs>